Let's talk about the Los Angeles Angels. I've talked about the Angels a couple times in this podcast since its inception, and uh, the reason why I'm talking about them here has not changed one bit. Uh, they are the same old Angels as they always are. Uh, I do not care about the fact that they are first in their division as of time of recording. I do not care about the fact that Shohei Otani looks every bit as dominant as he ever has looked. I don't care that Mike Trout seems to be jumping right back where he left off in his former MVP self. Uh, I don't care that they're above 500. I just don't care. Uh, now, I know that seems a little bit unfair, but hear me out and hear out what I am going to use to prove my argument. Uh, they are the same old angels. I don't care what you say. Uh, what's that old saying? You could put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. The angels are still a pig. Uh, and, and I know that that's, again, harsh, right? You know, may, maybe this is the year that they have figured it out. But let me kind of walk you through where the angels are at right now. So they're seven and five as of time of this recording. And uh, for those of you who go way back in the Wayback Machine, uh, and we can talk about uh, the video, or at least the clip uh, that I made uh, regarding how much I could not stand the Los Angeles Angels for the reason that most people that can't stand the Los Angeles Angels can't stand them, outside of the people who are fans of the team in their division uh, or perhaps San Francisco Giants fans, for those of you who remember 2000, and I believe two it was when the uh, Angels won the World Series against the Giants. Can't remember specific what the specific year was, but it was somewhere around there. Um, but anyway, uh, other than those fans, uh, I would say the vast majority of fans who hate the Angels hate them because they are wasting the prime of possibly the two best baseball players to ever walk our planet, uh, and certainly the two best baseball players currently walking this planet. Uh, and they are they have them both on the same team, and they are wasting them away. Uh, and it's quite frustrating, and this year it seems to be happening again. Now, I know it's early. It's only been 12 games. And like I said, they're 7-5. and five. That's not bad. They're first in their division. That's great. Or at least tied for first in their division. That's great. That's a good step in the right direction. And if you don't take a good first step, you're never going to get there. You're right. All that is true. However, the stats don't let me, don't lead me to believe that what they're doing is different or sustainable. Uh, I think that they, uh, quite frankly, got worse as a team in the offseason. Uh, I thought maybe they made some marginal improvements, but once they lost Noah Syndergaard, that rotation just fell right back into being absurdly mediocre. They don't really have any weapons outside of Shohei Otani and Patrick Sandoval, and even Patrick Sandoval has yet to take the big leap that all of us are waiting for. Maybe this year is it. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the ERA of the Angels' starting rotation is not half bad. It's uh, right around 4.5, which is... Uh, you know, not great, but it's not atrociously bad either. Uh, it's pretty much middle of the pack, uh, which is what you come to expect uh, from the Angels. However, uh, what I leave out of that is the fact that two of their starters in Shohei Otani and Patrick Sandoval, as mentioned before, have an ERA of 0.5 and 1.5, respectively. Uh, and so the rest of the starters have an ERA of right around 7. Yes, that's right. And if you want to be even more mean and lump Patrick Sandoval into the rest of the starters, outside of Shohei Otani, the Los Angeles Angels starting lineup, or excuse me, not starting lineup, starting rotation, my apologies, has an ERA of, let's check the stats, 5.56. That's very bad. And again, that number is including Patrick Sandoval and his absolute badness. Uh, or not not his absolute badness, but uh, his, his 1.54 ERA and everybody else's absolute badness. My apologies for uh, the miscommunication there. So, yeah, Angels pitching staff. Horrible, as per usual. They don't have 
anyone outside of Shohei Otani and so far Patrick Sandoval that are going to be guys that are consistent. Now, Griffin Canning just came back from the injured list and he pitched his first game yesterday or the day before and he did fairly well. So that's, I guess, a little promising. But for, for the most part, the Angels don't have anyone in their rotation that's making me sit there and think, hmm, if I faced them in the playoffs, I'd be terrified outside of Shohei Otani. I wouldn't be afraid to face Patrick Sandoval yet, and I'm certainly not afraid to face Jaime Berea or Griffin Canning or whoever else they feel like throwing out there. Uh, and now you're sitting there saying, well, Tyler, if their pitching rotation is that bad, their bullpen must be must be doing okay, right? No, they've got a couple of guys that have ERAs below one. And again, at the beginning of the season, it's hard to kind of read into all of these statistics too deep. But there's some guys that have 10 ERAs, some guys that have seven, some guys that have one. So their bullpen is really all over the place. So let's, just because it's the beginning of the year, and let's just be nice, and we'll say that their bullpen is average. Is that fair? I'd say that's fair. So the reason that they, a below average starting rotation ERA-wise and an average bullpen is above 500 right now is because their offense has been rolling. And it has been fun to watch. Shohei Otani's playing great. Mike Trout's playing great. Taylor Ward's playing great. Hunter Renfro's playing great. Logan O'Hap, their catcher, is playing great. And everyone else is playing very poorly. Very, very, very poorly uh, on the offensive end. I think Anthony Rendon, I know he's been hurt for a decent bit, but I think his batting average is like 120 so far this year. Uh, and It's just, it, it's not good, guys. And, you know, hey, you're saying, hey, look, you just named five guys that are hitting really, really well. That's half their lineup, and you're right. However, let's be honest with ourselves. Taylor Ward, last year, played very, very well. I wouldn't be surprised if he stays that consistent. So you've got three guys in your lineup, in Taylor Ward, in Shohei Otani, and Mike Trout, that are going to consistently give you quality at-bats, for the most part, Every time they come up to the plate, whether they get on base, whether they don't, you can trust that oftentimes they're going to do, you know, they're going to play good baseball and they're going to hopefully be able to do the right things for your team uh, at the drop of a hat. However, Logan O'Hap and Hunter Renfro don't give me that much confidence. Now, so far this year, they've been great. Don't get me wrong. But Hunter Renfro, let's take him as an example. In 12 games, in 45, 50-ish at-bats, he has struck out six times. Now, if anybody knows anything about Hunter Renfro, you know that that is nowhere near sustainable. It just isn't. I watched Hunter Renfro play on the Red Sox for a couple of years, and maybe it was just one year. Whatever it was, I've watched him very up, up close and personal on the Red Sox. He strikes out a lot, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with somebody who strikes out a lot if they bring other things to the table, as Hunter Renfro does. That's why he has had a job, and a very secure job, over the last handful of years, even though he's been on a bunch of different teams since then, he always finds another place to play, and he's always in the starting lineup, it seems, because he does a lot of things well offensively. Not striking out is not one of them. So, that's not sustainable. And I, full, full admission, full disclosure, I don't know really anything about Logan O'Hat. I don't. Don't know where he's from. Don't know how old he is. Don't really know how long he's been in the Angels organization for. But I will say this. As a, you know, as a catcher in the major leagues, a 295 batting average and leading your team in home runs, unless your name is Salvador Perez and you're playing for the Kansas City Royals, it's probably not sustainable either. So, I'm not saying that either of those guys are going to completely fall off a cliff. What I am saying is that right now, a team that is seven and five is being carried by an offense that outside of two 
maybe three guys, if you include Taylor Ward in there, are not going to be consistently reliable for you. Not L- L- Luis Rengifo or David Fletcher or any of these other pretenders that are sitting in the Angels lineup. And yes, I'm throwing you two in there, uh, $290 million man, Anthony Rendon. Throwing you in there too. None of these guys have given me any reason for me to believe that what is happening is going to continue to happen. None of those guys give me any confidence that they're going to turn it around and that they're going to be a positive force for this team, at least offensively. And none of the pitchers in that rotation, outside of Patrick Sandoval and Shohei Otani, of course, make me feel like they are going to make a positive difference. So to me, the Angels are exactly the same as they always have been. And you're not fooling me this year, L.A. You fooled me last year at one point. You did. You had me. You guys were like 10 or 12 games above 500. You guys were really killing it. And then you lost 1,000 games in a row. You ended up in third or fourth place again. You ended up six games below 500 again. That's what's going to happen this year, guys. I hate to break it to you. But unfortunately, it is. Hey guys, me again. Thank you so much for watching one of my clips from the Lopes Goes Last podcast. These clips are so much fun to do. I absolutely love making them and I absolutely love doing them. And this podcast is my baby. So I really want this thing to grow and I really want it to succeed. So if you did like what you see, please subscribe. Also hit that bell notification so you never miss any one of my episodes or one of my clips like this one. And please do also like and share these videos with your friends and your family so that we can make this thing grow as fast as possible. And I wanted to thank you again so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day.